been no bears in the park for a long, long time. It seems as if someone brought the thing there, which is really sad. That was a clip from October 2014. They were covering the story of a dead bear cub being found in Central Park. And thanks to a new piece from The New Yorker, we now know how it got there. Robert F. Kennedy Jr. Revelation came in a sweeping profile of RFK in The New Yorker. Apparently during a drive upstate for a day of falconry, RFK found a dead bear cub on the side of the road. He loaded it into his car with plans to skin it for meat. And he posed for this picture during the process. But knowing the New Yorker profile was coming and that it would mention this, he posted this video on X with his retelling to try to get ahead of it, along with the caption, looking forward to seeing how you spin this one, New Yorker. Take a look. At that time, this was the a little bit of the redneck in me. There'd been a series of bicycle accidents in New York. They had just put in the bike lanes. And saw people, a couple of people that got killed, and it was every day, and people had gotten badly injured. Every day it was in the press. Yeah. And so I thought, uh, I wasn't drinking, of course, but people were drinking with me who thought this was a good idea. And I said, well, I had an old bike in my car that somebody asked me to get rid of it. I said, let's go put the bear in Central Park and we'll make it look like he got hit by a bike. <laughs> It'd be fun and funny for people. So everybody thought that's a great idea. So we went and did that and we thought it would be amusing for whoever found it or something. Uh, the next day, it was like, uh, it was on every television station. It was the front page of every paper. And I turned on the TV and there was like a mile of yellow tape and there were 20 cop cars. There were helicopters flying over it. And I was like, oh my God, what did I do? The Manhattan DA's office told PIX11 in New York that RFK may now face charges for this incident. And when asked about it during his interview with the New Yorker, he said, Maybe that's where I got my brain worm. Hey, don't scroll away. Dit, dit, dit. Come back, come back. Because before the video continues, we just want to urge you to lend your support to TYT. You power our honest reporting. You do it at tyt.com slash team and we love you for it. Nevertheless, solving this decade long mystery did bring out some funny responses from people, including this user on X, Mark Sundstrom, who said, well, it took nearly 10 years, but I got my answer. You can see October 2014, who the blank hits a bear cub with their car, probably by accident, and then brings it to drop in Central Park. And to another user, RFK's latest scandal illustrates the absurdity of his candidacy. Candidacy uh, User The Sneck says, nobody, blank, RFK Jr., I had a brain worm. RFK Jr., I've sexually harassed a lot of women. RFK Jr., I once planted a dead bear in Central Park. Now, there is so much more to this profile, and Jake, maybe you and I can discuss some of the substance in that piece. <laughs> I saw you posting about this yesterday uh, when the bear storyline started to emerge. What do you make of this? Yeah, so look, I want an outsider populist so bad. And so I want to give these third party candidates a chance. And you know, uh, you know, I interviewed him here on the show, and he has a couple of policies that are really good. His money in politics uh, policy is perfect. It's exactly Wolfpack's policy, wolf-pack.com, okay? His housing policy is amazing. It would get rid of private equity, being able to buy our homes. It would help the housing market more than any other policy by a landslide. So I, w and he's an interesting cat. And I, and I want to like him personally, and I'll tell you why in a second. And, and I want to like a populist outsider going up against what used to be two decrepit guys, and that opened the door for him a lot more uh, before Biden dropped out of the race. But he does things that are so monumentally weird that it just makes it impossible. Who finds a dead bear and brings it to Central Park? Like, if when the mainstream media is going to attack any outsider as weird, radical, etc., don't help them minimize. They're gonna find something on everyone, right? Or they're gonna pretend to find something on everyone. But RFK Jr. is like, here's another softball, here's another one, here's another one. Like, oh, what are you doing to me? So I get it, these events were in the past, but 
No, nah, no, nah, that's too much, it's too much. But the number one thing that I thought is actually what a lot of you guys wrote in. So I'm gonna read a couple of members here. First, a YouTube member and then a couple of folks from tyt.com. Um, so is Quincy Magoo uh, wrote in, RFK Jr. hangs out with Roseanne Barr, even sicker. Okay, so I was thinking, you're gonna tell the country about how it's not weird that you dropped off a dead bear in Central Park and you chose as your vehicle to do this, a video with Roseanne Barr. What are you doing, Bobby? What are you doing? Like, so it makes it really hard to say, hey, let's have an open mind. So here's more, I do declare, wrote in a member on tyt.com slash team. When you shock Roseanne with your story, you've lost the plot. And she was, she was like, oh my God, that's so crazy. When you've got Roseanne Barr reacting that way, come on. And Wong John wrote in, that whole RFK story sounds grisly. If he keeps this up, he'll barely have any support left. He's gonna have to panda to his base a lot more. Okay, thank you for doing my work for me. Those excellent dad jokes slash puns, nicely done. I love our members, hit the join button below. Okay, no, this story does not affect his housing policy. Does it affect his chances of winning and hence whether we should continue to have serious conversations about him? Yes, it does affect that and it probably should. We mentioned that story, that New Yorker story. In it, I thought it was a really fascinating read. Um, spent a good 45 minutes with it this morning just trying to take it all in and better understand who he is. This guy is running, uh, we'll get to the caveats around running in a second. But what is depicted is a, is a story of somebody who appears deeply traumatized by the loss of his father. And then for the next few decades, tries to fill that hole with various vices. And in the process has alienated a lot of his friends, a lot of his longtime friends. They're concerned about him. He's some of the associations, of course, Roseanne Barr in this video. This is like the first celebrity who endorsed the QAnon conspiracy. She had this really over the top anti-Semitic Twitter post several years ago with the gingerbread cookies, just really offensive stuff. On top of that, though, there are people on his own campaign who have some very, very problematic pasts, views, beliefs, stances now, currently. It's it's very, very alarming. And on that candidacy, he is, he's running, of course, his poll numbers have diminished with Kamala Harris replacing Biden on the ticket, but he is still running and they're targeting people in swing states. So he's pulling, he, they're trying to target Disillusioned Republicans in solid blue states, disillusioned uh, Democrats in solid red states. We don't know how many they'll pull, but they do seem to be polling well with young people and Latinos. I would be very worried with Trump on the ballot about the potential playing spoiler. Who knows how close these margins are? We saw it was very, very close in 2020. I don't know, the polling is looking better for Harris, but I'm a little concerned. But all that said, it depends on if he can get on the ballot. A lot of this is presumptive. He's still, they're still trying to get ballot access in a lot of these states. To me, and maybe you disagree, there's no like real mathematical path to victory for Kennedy. So it does seem like you're still throwing away your vote if you are in a state where he is on the ballot. So I have thoughts on whether you're throwing away your vote and then I wanna tell you why I, I wanna root for him personally in a second. But first, Twitch members get in on the act. Uh, Mr. Scruffio 4 says, no to RFK Jr., the Second Amendment is not for bare arms. Uh, Occam's Taser writes in, now we know what RFK Jr. would do for a Klondike bar. And Thomas Anakin says, this will lose RFK J support at a bare minimum. Okay, and Amy, back to YouTube member says, also can we talk about the fact that he was going to eat a rotten road killed dead bear, but couldn't take the COVID vaccine? <laughs> <laughs> These are devastatingly good points in my opinion. So you know I agree with him on the things that I just mentioned and those are big ones, housing and money and politics. But I disagree with him on other things including vaccine and especially as Amy points out, vaccine versus eating a dead bear. Okay, <laughs> so now that leads me to the personal point before we get to the electoral things here. Look, um, I had a friend uh, who lost his dad young and he lives a little wild uh, like RFK Jr. does. He reminds me of him 
he reminds me of him a lot. Okay, they also believe the same kind of theories, etc. This guy's one of my best friends, and so I know why he does that, and he tells me why he does that, especially when he gets drunk. Which is, hey, listen, when I lost my dad in my own arms, I knew life was short, so what is lived cannot be unlived, and so I'm gonna live, 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 live. And I feel like RFK Jr. lived that kind of life, and given that his father was shot when he was young, and he got that same lesson. I'm not at all surprised by that. And that's the kind of guy that I normally like in real life. Do I go falconeering? No. Would I know what to do? No. But do I kind of want to go falconeering with Bobby Kennedy? Yeah. Okay. Because he's, and now, by the way, if you say, hey, while he was doing that, he did other bad things and he took it too far, super fair, super fair. That's not, you don't get to live. Uh, life to its maximum at other people's expense, right? So I'm not here to adjudicate that because I don't know the details of those stories, okay? But I know that that's why he does what he does and that's part of why I root for him. But but this is too much and I don't just mean the dead bear. That's If it was just the dead bear, fine. And, and look, I've defended him on the brain worm. A lot of people have that condition, it sounds super funny and he shouldn't have said it in a deposition. We can go on and on and on. But all these things are piled up, but the most important thing is, when you make an extraordinary case against vaccines, and that's what you're mainly known for, and you disagree with 99% of the world's doctors and scientists, it behooves you to be super rational on everything else so that you gain enough credibility for us to go, huh, I wonder if he's right about the vaccines and 99% of the world's doctors are wrong. That's a really high bar. And when you got the dead bears and the brain worms, etc., much harder to get there. That's just real. And you can say, hey, Jake, I don't like that you're saying things that are real. That, well, then this is not the show for you. But that's obviously true, and he's not anywhere near that bar at this point. Now, finally, the most important point is once Biden dropped out, RFK Jr.'s numbers sank like a rock. And so that's because he lost almost all of his Democratic voters. Because those Democratic voters were like, uh, uh, what? You want me to vote for Biden, Biden can't speak. You're insulting my intelligence by telling me to vote for Biden. The guy's barely alive. And that was a huge part of the reason they went looking for someone else and found Bobby Kennedy Jr. So once Kamala Harris came in and she was alive, a lot of those Democratic voters went back to the Democratic Party. So if you're rooting for Bobby Kennedy Jr. to get out of the race and you're a Democrat, I think you're strategically incorrect. I think at this point, I would be surprised if the great majority of the votes he's taking isn't from Donald Trump. That's why Trump keeps attacking him. So whether he's gonna stay in the race or not is a different question. Whether he can regain any kind of momentum and get there by election day to the point where he'd be realistic, that seems enormously unlikely. Mainly because Biden dropped out, let alone all these stories, right? If he gets there, he gets there, okay? But for now, that seems super unlikely and so, I, strategically, if you're a Democrat, I think you definitely want him in this race and taking those Trump votes away. Uh, but, but I don't think he's going to win, and I, I don't think he, that that it just it was too tough given the life that he lived. Thanks for watching the Young Turks. Really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, Jr. So those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video, thank you.